All right, guys, Jay here. In today's tutorial, we will look at how we can make a basic walking controller out of the new input system. All right, let's do it. All right, let's open up the Unity Hub. I'll be creating a new project and I'll be using Unity version 2019.3 because the UI is really sweet, so sweet. But you can use any version from 2019.1 and above because the input system package requires the minimum version to be 2019.1. I'll be using the 3D template and let's rename our project name to Walking Controller. The first thing you need to do is to download the input system package from the package manager. Head over to window, package manager. And if the input system package is not listed over here, make sure you go to the advanced and have show preview packages checked. And now let's find the input system package and install it. While the input system package is being installed, you will receive a pop-up during the process and you just have to click yes and then restart your Unity for it to take effect. So before we begin, let's set up our scene a bit. Let's create a ground plane for the player to move on. There will be a 3D object, plane. Let's rename it to ground. Resize it a bit to make it larger. Now let's make our player game object and that will be a capsule. And rename it to player. And shift it above the ground. Let's change the color of our ground because white is a little too harsh on our eyes. Let's set it as somewhat somewhere around dark blue and drag it over the ground game object. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is create the input system. Let's rename it to Inputs Manager. Let's double click on this and create a new action map named player and for the actions we'll be doing the walking controller so we'll name this walking let's delete the default binding and create our own 2d vector composite so 2d vector composite is something like a joystick that has up and down left and right values and binding is simply key presses or button presses like the X button, the circle button, etc. Let's name this WASD and set the binding for the up vector to W key on the keyboard, down to the S key on the keyboard, left to the A key, and right to the D key. So the interaction for these keys will be on hold, meaning to say when the user holds down the key, the player character will move. But when the user releases the key, the player character will still continue moving because there is no callback function that tells the input system that the user has released the key. So for that, we need to add in another interaction which is on press release only. So this is to ensure that when the key is released, a callback function will trigger to tell the input system that the user has released the key, so stop moving the player character. Now let's save the assets and create a new script, the walking controller. This script will be the one that's actually controlling the movement of our player character. Let's double click on it and open it in Visual Studio. So I've already written the script beforehand, I won't be 
retyping out everything so I'll just copy and paste it over and explain everything line by line alright so the first thing is we'll be using the unity engine and the unity engine input system so this input system is from the input system package we'll be moving an object that has a collider component and a rigid body component so the movement will be based on the rigid body velocity so we'll have this down as a required component so that whenever we drop this script onto a game object it will automatically create this for us do note that this require component collider will throw you an error if your game object does not already have a collider object on it so let me quickly demonstrate what I mean by that so if you go over to your player game object and remove the capsule collider and now drag and drop this script onto it it will throw you an error because there is no such collider which is just called a collider it has to be either a box a capsule or a mesh collider so let's just hit ok and add a component collider in this case it will be the capsule collider for us and now if you drag and drop this here it will instantly create the rigid body component for us in the rigid body we have to freeze the rotation on all axes because we'll be doing the rotation manually now let's head back into the script since we'll be using our rigid body we need to get the rigid body component on our wake and now how do we actually get the input from the input system how, how do we know what keys are being pressed that is by this method private void on walking input value value so on walking is a callback function on what you have written in the actions before so let me quickly show you what I mean by that so if you open your inputs manager your actions is named walking so this has to be on walking if you were to change this to on walking ABC save your asset now this has to be on walking abc so on simply means this is an event basically when the user presses a key the system will know that and run the code in here so the value we will receive is a vector 2 and we'll store it in the wasd input which is a private vector 2 that's used for calculation to make this logic work after getting the value, we will then process the input. Why do we have to process the input is because the value is a float and that makes the speed ramp up and down. And we don't want that. We want the player character to instantly move and stop on pressing the key. For other game objects, maybe like a car, you might want it to slowly ramp up to its max speed. But for a player character, you just want it to start and stop instantly. So for that, we will create a temporary variable if the input y is greater than 0 meaning to say the w key is being pressed set it to positive 1 if the input y is negative 0 set it to negative 1 which means we are pressing the s key and for the horizontal input if the x value is greater than 0 set the horizontal value to positive 1 and if it's lesser than 0 set it to negative 1 so with this we will be able to start and stop instantly and before we process the input we will need to actually set the walk velocity to zero just to reset its movement velocity and the walk velocity is also another private vector tree that's used for calculations so now that we have the vertical and horizontal value of being either positive or negative we'll put it inside the walk velocity so for the vertical movement in the z-axis we'll add it to vector tree dot forward times whether it's positive or negative times the walk speed and walk speed is a public float that you can change to adjust its speed same thing for the horizontal movement value and now once we have the walk velocity value we'll put it inside the late update that actually makes the character move so if there's no input set the walk velocity to zero 
and now we'll move the rigid body by changing its velocity. So we'll create a new vector tree. For the x axis, it will be the walk velocity dot x. For the y axis, it will be the default rigid body's own y axis velocity because this will be changed using a jump script, which we will be doing in a following tutorial. And for the z axis, will be walk velocity dot z. So with this done, let's save our script and head back into Unity. We can close this. Click on your player's object. And before we test it out, make sure you add a component which is the which is the player input component from the package manager. Under the actions, drag your inputs manager and drop it in. The default map is set to player because we only have one. And now let's just play the game and test it out for ourselves. As you can see, it's moving fine with just a little issue that it moves with a delay. And that is because the default delay value is set to 0.4. So to change that, let's go to Edit, Project Settings, Input System Package, Create Settings Assets. This will create a new file with all of the settings. Now go to your default hold time and set this to 0. And now if we rerun the game, It moves perfectly. So in the next tutorial, I'll be showing you how you can move the character with rotation. That means when it's moving to the left, the character faces to the left. And if it's moving to the right, it faces to the right. Alright guys, listen. Thank you for watching the tutorial. If you like it, please consider subscribing and hit the bell icon. If you don't hit the bell icon, the bell icon will drop on your head. So hit the bell icon, alright? And then stay tuned for the next tutorial. Thank you. Namaste. <coughs> oh dear.